think one of the issues is not only the initial capital improvements, but also the ongoing maintenance and operations yeah. and responsiveness of the uh, Wright City Department in figuring out who to call. Driving along the expo line and there was a crew of 20 people at different spots and they'd main they were maintaining that beautifully. So figuring out right. yeah. who's maintaining what uh, yeah. effectively Chances and our Metro has so their right. internal yeah. crew that yeah. maintains all of their yeah. sites because when I was kind of trying to do research so you know that could be it that it needs to be cleaned uh, but it's because we only had to start it maybe the first few months I can't it's been so about 08 or so but all the other stuff once it takes root because they're cactus and, and drought tolerant they'll last so even though they pulled up the irrigation it's still green. Directed. This is all DWP right here. So I've seen the signs, the City of Los Angeles DWP. And I'm assuming between them and the Army Corps of Engineering LA Flood Control, they probably have up into the street in terms of land ownership. Both their whole site should be water managed and, 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 and dealt with in a way that's green infrastructure. And this would be a good kickoff for them. So just for the future meeting, DW, and they have money yeah. to pay for water at least. It is all along Venice. They've done a great job of doing some of the, of the landscaping work. Yard. If they copied yes. exactly same the concept. same thing and put it right here, it would be a vast improvement. Like, yeah. I would be fine with that. Right. And if they're maintaining that, they can, they can maintain, maintain this. this. I mean, is they could have an education station yeah. about sorting oh, trash oh, or yeah. like uh, oil, oil and paper. Uh, cap, like, come look at the stormwater drain. Like, this is. This is where it feeds into, yeah, yeah. like, come c come, drop it off here and learn about stormwater systems and sorting oh, yeah, your trash. Yeah, yeah, so the yeah. educational aspect of yeah. things, I think Santa Monica cool. does that with a big Smurf system. You can kind of walk around and have placards yeah. that explain to you this is... Well, if the city wants to look like Santa Monica, which, you know, that's a yeah, good well, standard. Well, <laughs> I live there. It's over. Right. <laughs> What about volunteers as far as uh, community service work? Oh, that's a great idea. We don't, we, they we do it periodically. They, we do the neighborhood how did that turn out? and suites, mm -hmm. and then also mm -hmm. the council oh, office yeah. will complain, yeah. and they'll bring in a uh, conservation corps. Oh, but there, yeah. there's several. Right now, when you call them, they'll come out and they'll yeah. actually do it. Yeah. Yes, we would need something that it was scheduled to come right. every Not week. Yeah. week. And we have community yeah. service. There's it's kids cool. getting in trouble. What are they doing? I mean, surely yeah. DCT can get a dedicated group of kids to say, hey, look, we're coming through. I'm, I'm just trying to think yeah. outside of the box. Kind of we are on some type of schedule where it's the Conservation Corps, because if I'm no, home, I'll go out and say, you guys want water, and I'll mm -hmm. give them yeah. water, whatever, and so it is, it's the young really kids. Yeah. So okay. it's just the city is so big, and resources, you know, that schedule isn't Get ideal. Home. Between there, I'm trash. Um, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a moment to summarize what we've talked about here, and then walk up to the okay, next block. <laughs> I'm taking notes, okay, so. and I will summarize them. And we've talked about this, and if you agree, our thought is to set up a Facebook page and some Google Docs where we'll put everything together. Okay, and that way we can all track it together that way. <clears throat> so here, here's what I've um, figured out based on what you've been saying. And for that, we can look to our community resources, which include um, the community service workers, our local kids. It could, it could be a dedicated crew from the city, for example, to come by on a periodic scheduled basis. Um, it could, on an ad hoc basis or on an as-needed basis, include the Conservation Corps, the Greenworks, uh, the Block Clubs, and other community resources. Um, so basically, look at, an, for, at the economic situation from an integrated way uh, that includes all the community assets to figure out how to, first of all, address the issue and create the nicest place, and then to maintain it and operate it. That's point one. Point two is, when there's an issue, who to call and make sure that they're responsive. Identify all of the various overlapping public agencies. There's actually a theory, are you ready for a word? Polycentric governance. This is like a huge area of research and a woman got the Nobel Prize for this. We've got all these overlapping agencies. How do we get everybody to work together? Well, first of all, they have to talk together and then maybe the community needs a memorandum of understanding as one possibility. But somehow we've got to figure out this governance component. So that's point two. So the economics is point one. The governance is point two. And then other programs and amenities could include things like education. Um, how to sort the trash? What's the history? How does this work? How does the creek work? Who lives on the creek? Why do the birds need the creek? Where are the frogs? 
Um, what do we do about those folks who are homeless, who are trying to live in the community? Belita has dealt with this issue. It's been an ongoing issue. But it's, you know, the education about this is a community resource. It's not to be living in, but then how do we, in a, an appropriate way and a, in a uh, empathic way, Ad address um, you know social issues of, of um, inequities. And you also bring in the arts. You know maybe make uh, art out of the trash. Maybe look to the example of the Santa Monica Smurf for how they um, use that as an educational opportunity. Uh, so that's point three. Point four is we need maybe uh, one or two pieces of paper and ask each person to put down their name, their mobile number, their email address. Who they're representing here? Do they live here? Are they somebody trying to help? And then maybe the top three issues on one piece of paper today. So by the end of this meeting at like 11:59, we'll gather that. Um, maybe somebody wants to take a picture with their cell phone to document it, and then I'll go back and put it into our Facebook page and our Google Docs. Thank you. Do you like that? Yeah. That's okay. Okay. That's a walking oh, path there. there. You go across here. It would actually go this side and on that so side. So they overgrew it. Oh, right. So what Understood. happened is, yeah, during the gang area or whatever, right? So everyone put the fences up there to close it off. You know, you, you could actually go all the way down here to uh, right by Belita's house. Yeah. The case for that passageway, as long as it's an active, maintained, you know, vibrant part of the community, as opposed to a, a, a vagrant hangout problem. Right. Yeah. I'm so not advocating closing yeah. at all. But I use it. Yeah, that's right. I walk but my the, dog and come there. But that's the consensus yeah. building at the right. community yeah. level. Yeah. 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 We need to open it back up. Is the yeah, we trust we building that right. it will Loop. be maintained yeah, the way they said? Correct. Because oh, this is another beautification project they did, that obviously. Could be a bike path. The community was knocking on my door asking what's happening in Melbourne that the, the mothers couldn't get through that was walking with the kids. <laughs> this is the concern. Mm -hmm. So are represented, field rep from CD10. What's been proposed so far? A comprehensive plan that works from Genesee Park all the way down all this open space that's owned by, I assume, public agencies to deal with water going into the creek, Trash. public access, recreation. people walking, recreation, quality of life stuff. I know how big the mayor is on, you know, the Vision Zero and all this bike stuff, so, but then also I've heard of people wanting to do community gardens. That too. Yeah, there's plenty of room for that. Okay. Well, well, that would be nice here. Yep. Yeah. Which makes a lot but of sense. But that's what when I was saying, the mobility, it was the bike path. Correct. And the bike right walking path. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. One, of the, one of the issues that I always had is, is doing things back here. Uh, so so we, we need the county at our next that. meeting, right? Yeah. That's... See, Absolutely correct. Because you could spend a whole day, two days on the phone, and everybody's saying, "Call this one, call this one, call this one, call this one and, and get nowhere. Yeah. Whenever, whenever it's time for um, some maintenance, because you know we we always wind up doing it. Uh, but whenever we, you know, whenever projects come up and we're thinking about doing this, then the county takes on the street. It kind of throws me off because this is technically a street. So this is technically street services for yeah. right now. And so one is, are, are we talking about changing jurisdiction? Well, that's who has money. Know. That's yeah. the question. This what? Is I think it stops here. And I, and I think we start on this side. How can we have someone here, come out and let us know exactly we're what's what? Part. We just got to get everybody on the same page. This, and the bridgeway right here is actually went across. Right. There was a bridge? And there was another one Oh, here. man. Oh, right. What do we no, do? No, 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 no. I got do? them to remove it. Okay, if they had done something to maybe put an overhead over it. Right. Okay, we had two kids sick. that actually failed. And was helicoptered out of here oh, over wow. to Cedars. Now, how oh, okay. wow. hmm? yeah, yeah, but the, it was it was open, so it was unsafe. Right. Okay, it or it's just a matter of somebody got killed. Right. So they came out and actually knocked on my door and told me that they were going to be removing it. And at that time, too, the, the gang issue, the prostitution, sure. Sure. and everything was going on. The exits was was here, and there was another one down over there. It's probably been about maybe. 15 years, okay. you know, ago now okay. that they came out and did that. Well, I doubt they're going to come and put it back. <laughs> Who's they? You know, I believe it was the oil company over there. It wasn't really a bridge. It was a decommissioned uh, pipeline. Uh, it wasn't really a bridge. The fences on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have those right. on Bonner Creek. Those yeah. are not yeah. cut pipe right. Right. that people use. And it was probably more... For maintenance or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. but people right. kind of right. co-opted. The, the community co-opted and used them. it. Right. Yeah. But keeping these gates closed at night 
to keep people from coming in here. Now, those three little encampments, you know, that's, yeah. that's there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the guys there tell me we still have a crowd that comes through here, like, you know, two, three o'clock uh, in, in the morning. So we but need the county at our that. next that. meeting, right? right. That's. See? Absolutely correct. Because you could spend a whole day, two days on the phone, and everybody's saying, "Call this one, call this one, call this one, call this one, call this one and get nowhere." Yeah. Whenever, whenever it's time for um, some maintenance, because you know we we always wind up doing it. Uh, but whenever we, you know, whenever projects come up and we're thinking about doing this, then the county takes ownership. Would this be street services? But, but, but it kind of it kind of throws me off because this is technically a street. So this is technically street services for yeah. right now. And so one is, are, are we talking about changing jurisdiction? Well, that, that's not, I just who has don't know. money? That's yeah. the question. This could, this could just be the county. Yeah, easy way. He doesn't know this what's what. I think it stops here. And that's just my, my thought. But I think it stops here. And I think we start on this side. How can we then have someone come out and let us know exactly what's what? Okay. Got you. Put the parties together. We just got to get everybody on the same page. Just figure out all this. Everybody's on board. That wouldn't be a problem. problem. We can leverage money from the county. He's been doing it long enough. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, 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 None of it's rocking. No, it's just the red. Everything had a reason. You know, keep people out. That was the reason. I get that. But we could have ballers so cars won't drive down, and you don't need this. Hey. Right down through here, and the bridgeway right here is actually went the across. There was a bridge? And there was oh, another one Oh, over man. Here. Whoa, right. What do we no, do? No, 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 no. I got do? them to remove it. I know okay? you did. I'm not. I'm wow. not. No, I understand. No. You said that was okay. A if they had done something to maybe put an overhead over it, right. okay, we had two it was kids. Safe. It wasn't safe. We had two kids that actually failed and was helicoptered out of here oh, over wow. to Cedars. It was open, so it was unsafe, right. okay? Or it's just a matter of somebody got killed. Right. So they came out and actually knocked on my door and told me that they were gonna be removing it. And at that time too, the, the gang issue, the prostitution sure. Sure. and everything was going on, you know, down here. So there was, the exit was, was here and there was another one down over there. How long ago? How long Being ago? able, uh, this has probably been about maybe 15 years, so it's a different time now, but you know, but we had the same issue over on the Adams side, you know, where you, you when we were younger, we, we walked through, you know, I mean, you, you don't have to walk all the way around, mm -hmm. you know, so it brings the community more together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who was that? You know, I believe it was the oil company, yeah. okay? That runs off of the Baldwin Hill. Right, okay, okay. and they bridge. Have it was that, a decommissioned uh, pipeline. Uh, it wasn't really a bridge, though. Over there. The no, that was up under the bottom. Uh, and uh, then people the, uh, would walk across uh, it and they have fences on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have those right. on Bonner Creek. Those yeah. are not yeah. technically bridges. Right. right. There is that no, no, one bridge the, no, 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 was that by the high school, bridge? Culver City. It was a walkway created right. to, on top of the pipe. Right. right. That people used. And it was probably more... Yeah, mm -hmm. but people right. kind of right. co-opted the, the community co-opted and for used them. it. Right. Yeah, right. And right. they said, "We'll take it, it out." It was not originally put we in for, for, yeah, yeah, for, 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 <laughs> for mobility. Yeah, yeah. but we can get we can get back and go right that street. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's there's split, the irrigation is, is working. I know I turned it off. The irrigation's working. They had the big trucks in here, and they had in the last rain down over on the other side there too. That's what they were doing. I don't know, but they dug down pretty deep, yeah. and uh, so they were telling me. That that was the reason that they needed the access. Yeah. Okay, so for what? I mean, I don't, I, I don't know, but keeping these gates closed at night to keep people from coming in here. Now, those three little encampments, you know, that's, yeah. that's there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the guys there tell me we still have a crowd that comes through here, like, you know, two, three o'clock uh, in, in the morning. Oh, and then they leave. Yeah, they leave, yeah, yeah. And they have one kid, the big guy, the Christian guy, he hasn't been there for two weeks. Well, I don't know where he... Uh, cause he just he came was, back? He was yeah. working. No, and, no, I know, but for two and, um, weeks, he's, 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 he has and not he was been like, there. He left his number and everything. No, I know. have it. Yeah, um, but he wasn't 
think it was a 760 area code. Yeah. Let's loop back on that. Yeah, that, they, that they say got a yeah, brother, he's not homeless anymore, yeah. or at least not living here. Yeah, he could probably talk the talk afterward yeah. if, if, in fact, he has a good story to tell. If we have a group of people on by on a creek, people say Mitch. Yeah, but he's back. <laughs> oh, they didn't say that, did they? Yeah, they said he moved back. No, he's he's back on that spot. He just came back. He's been gone for a week. Multiple oh, reasons. You could identify substantially probably ten different reasons that would go from fiscal I've seen a lot to of community. It's right there. It's not. You could dump just one issue example. necessarily. So. Okay. Why would somebody like a be homeless bag. if they have a drug problem, or maybe they're crazy and they have mental disorders, or maybe there's they really, yeah, have there's jobs, barriers to there's, jobs. There's mental illness. Backgrounds that criminal backgrounds that they can't get access to employment or to education. People don't have resources. I liked what you, you said, you know, in the summary hmm. about minority communities getting being part of solving the problem, and then given the gate afterward. And that's going to happen here? <laughs> no, I know. Once this is green and beautiful, all the, I was looking at the house that got built up on a big lot, you know, you can see the knock down yeah. the lot and the mansion eyes. Like, every house will be mansion eyes like that one, right? Yeah. And, and, and you'll see the beautiful white people running up and down here saying, thank you, how'd you guys clean this crap up? <laughs> and, and Mr. Uh, Melvin will be like, you know, I asked for it, it came. But, yeah, but yeah. now it's not really mine, it's for the next generation. But that's what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of over it. How do you no, keep people I, here? I don't know. How, you can't make people. You can't change <laughs> real estate trades, <laughs> the job market. You can't change that. It, it, I, it's not a development. I mean, it's, it's, it's just recreating open space. It is. You can't yeah. say, well, now we have to make sure that people don't move. Well, how do I, how do you, how do you legislate that? <laughs> okay. You know? Hi. Join the crowd. We're going to do a summary right now. Please bear in mind that go back and I'll set up a Facebook page working with everyone here and a Google Docs. I'm going to first give you the summary. Number one, to look at an integrative economic model where we're looking not only at the capital improvements and how much it costs for that and then the ongoing maintenance and operations, but what other community assets can we bring into this to leverage for the ongoing issues. Some of those community assets that have been identified include community service workers like the local kids, Greenworks, <clears throat> Conservation Corps, that maybe um, we want to have a dedicated crew that would come through periodically on, a, on a, a scheduled basis and then other people to help with special needs or um, on an ad hoc needed as needed basis. Maybe also the block club and the care and protection and the enjoyment. Number two is <clears throat> there are so many overlapping stakeholders and agencies so um, I'm applying the term polycentric governance look at things like who owns the land who has responsibility for the land uh, based on a community based um, consensus building model develop an, perhaps a memorandum of understanding that this is how we are going to take care of this area this is who's responsible for what and when that would be the polycentric governance which includes multiple overlapping entities including each local resident. The third um, category would be programmed, educational programs, community festivals, block parties, um, including art. The fourth one, combined with other existing or in development plans, such as the mobility plan, probably a water plan being developed. There's probably a city sustainability plan. I know you've got a new resilience officer. Also the um, biodiversity plan. So the fourth main point is to align with other plans so that we're all working together and integrating across all the various initiatives. In terms of the polycentric governance, how in a humane way to attend to the issue of homeless. How can we be um, appropriate and empathic even as we're protecting our communities and our homes and our children? Community gardens would be part of the program and lighting. Uh, that would be part of capital improvements, lighting. And, and I have a suggestion yes. in regard to lighting. Look across there, there's solar panels on that house. There's right. a little windmill going. We could have some sustainable... Could be a hundred. Could be a demonstration yes. project for 100% yes. renewable. There. I would also like to recommend this particular site as an education site for stormwater. Okay. I think there's a nice visual of a stormwater drain coming in, um, and so this I don't know how that would look, but in watching it come out, understanding that what's on our streets just comes straight through yeah. there, yeah. and while we're moving towards trying to clean that water, right now it just goes straight into our bay. 
and, and bird watching also. So there, we will come up with many, many more. This is just the starting point. Um, the sixth category of issues, integrative comprehensive plan for the area. Valida was mentioning that there actually was a plan at some point for this area. So if we could pull that out and we'll take a look at that as well. It was between Cochran Place, and Cochran Avenue. We're gonna go from there to Tennessee. But where I am right at Cochran is where it comes above ground. It's the first point. And they were talking about putting a plaque or something and identifying that as the first point above ground. And they were talking about putting a bird sanctuary that like she was talking about. So over the years there have been ideas that have been Agreed upon. Let's talk about the scope of this comprehensive plan. Where does it begin and where does it end? So Venice and Cochrane is where we start okay. and we follow all the way down and I don't know, Genesee is where we started today. I don't but, know. But we can, go, we can say to the city line. So, so the concept that we talked about, Early and I talked about, and Lights, I brought it up, is you do put a package together that says there's a series of opportunities yeah. from Cochrane to Genesee. I'm just throwing yeah. that out. We yeah. can go all the way if we wanted to cross the 10 which is where my territory starts. But there's a series of concepts that deal with water, contamination of the creek, which is what drives a lot of this investment. It's like keeping the MS4, keeping the city water flow. So Bureau of Sanitation, Enrique Salad Salivar, they'd be all into it because we're dealing with runoff, parking lots, you know, streets, all that going into the creek. So all these would be multi-benefit. They'd have public benefit, they'd have water benefit, and certainly be quality of life benefit. Say this, that area, and we're dealing with this much water in this area, then the investment would be there ultimately in a, in a comprehensive, not like, oh, we did this little pocket here, and we got another pocket going here, we're all fighting against it. No, it's got to be, we're all for this one big stretch. The communities are all on board. It's going to impact how things, you know, transportation, mobility, quality of life, all of that would be in the plan. And I don't know who's going to pay for it in terms of putting a concept together, but a concept is where you start, and then you can start becoming a part of these environmental mitigation projects. Army Corps of Engineers, they have an obligation to have a recreation benefit on top of the flood control benefit that they created around Bionna Creek. So the goal is to mirror what they're doing in the LA River, mirror what they're doing in the Bionna Creek. This is the opening of the Bionna Creek. It starts here and I think you guys have a lot more opportunity than we have down creek because there's a lot more land that's publicly yeah. owned. David, uh, could you address the issue of natural cleanup where we bring the water out of the creek? at times and fantasy, actually obviously. have plans where the planting and everything cleans the water. Bioremediation and swales. So everything that comes off this street when the storm comes, rolls down here and it probably runs right down. You can just kind of see the natural progression, either puddles or it rolls. The goal is to stop it before it gets to the creek and clean the water. We're doing that along Bionic Creek and this is just a great buffer, at least on this side for the watershed, to keep water coming out. Then the transportation part, you know, moving up and down the, the alley is great. Oh. People talk about bringing water out of the creek and irrigating and reusing the water. There's not enough water, but if you could, you know, and you have to talk to the Army Corps, and we're not doing that on the LA River at all, you know, capturing water and reusing it yet, and you got to pump it to get it back up here. But that's certainly more sustainable than irrigating and using water all the time. What they're trying to do with the water issue is ignore the storm days and let the water go to the ocean dirty. The dry weather, they're gonna take care of like the Sepulveda Channel. Uh, right now, they're trying to get away with running the water down the creek straight to the ocean when it rains, stormwater. So I'm saying maybe we can offer an alternative to that and actually bring the water up and clean it up naturally. What about having a soft bottom? That's an Army Corps of Engineers question. The county actually has a flat that talk about Bologna Creek yep. and how it operates, that if we could just duplicate and get some of those plaques that Mark has put up there on the hill and put them on the fences down here to educate That's the community. Part of the, point. Um, the sixth category of issues is, um, as David said, where's David? David, integrative comprehensive plan for the area. So basically identify what are the opportunities to Valida was mentioning that there actually was a plan at some point for this area. So if we could pull that out and we'll take a look at that as well. But it was it was a small it was between Cochran Place and Cochran Avenue. We're gonna go the, from there to Tennessee. That's that's the point we're, we're talking about. Yeah. Where I am right at Cochran is where it comes above ground. It's the first point. And they were talking about putting a plaque or something and identifying that as the first point above ground and going this way and uh, in between there, there are these fences and they were talking about putting a bird sanctuary. There have been ideas that have been 
agreed upon. Let's talk about the scope of this comprehensive plan. Where does it begin and where does it end? Am I hearing Cochran Avenue? But your plans were at Cochran. And between Cochran Avenue and Cochran Place is where the bulk of it and is. And the furthest north. And we're right by that triangle part that you were asking about. Yeah. That's where we are. And, and, the, and it daylights at Cochran. Right. right. The so creek daylights at Cochran. What's that? What, it's on Venice though, right? Or what? It's at Venice and Cochran. Right. So Venice and Cochran is where we start. Okay. And we follow all the way down. And I don't know, Genesee is where we started today. I don't but, know. But we can, go, we can say to the Culver City line. So we yeah. guessed it. Or where's the Culver City line? Uh, Los Anigas yeah, where yeah, Culver yeah. City. Right. The concept that we talked about, early and I talked about, and Lights, I brought it up, is you, you put a package together that says there's a series of opportunities yeah. from Cochrane to Genesee. I'm just throwing yeah, that out. We yeah, can go all the way fine. if we wanted to cross the tent, which is where my territory starts. But there's a series of concepts that deal with water, contamination of the creek, which is what drives a lot of this investment. It's like keeping the MS4, keeping the city water flow, so Bureau of Sanitation, Enrique Salad Salivar, they'd be all into it because we're dealing with runoff, parking lots, you know, streets, all that going into the creek. So all these would be multi-benefit. They'd have public benefit, they'd have water benefit, and certainly be quality of life benefit. If this, that area, and we're dealing with this much water in this area, then the investment would be there ultimately. And it, it, we're all for this one big stretch. The communities are all on board. It's gonna impact how things, you know, transportation, mobility, quality of life, all of that would be in the plan. And I don't know who's gonna pay for it in terms of putting a concept together, but a concept is where you start. And then you can start becoming a part of these environmental mitigation projects, these, these uh, water quality projects, Army Corps of Engineers, they have an obligation to have a recreation benefit on top of the flood control benefit that they created around Bionic Creek. So the goal is to mirror what they're doing in the LA River, mirror what they're doing in the Bionic Creek. This is the opening of the Bionic Creek. It starts here. And I think you guys have a lot more opportunity than we have down Creek because there's a lot more land that's publicly yeah. owned. David, uh, could you address the issue of perhaps having natural cleanup where we bring the water out of the creek at times and fantasy, actually obviously. have plans where the planting and everything cleans the water Power remediation and swales so everything that comes off this street when the storm comes rolls down here and it probably runs right down you can just kind of see the natural progression either puddles or it rolls the goal is to stop it before it gets to the creek and clean the water we're doing that along Bionic Creek and this is just a great buffer at least on this side for the watershed to keep water coming out then the transportation part you know moving up and down the, the alley is great I think the last piece you asked me like, was uh, was uh, was cleaning the water. Oh, people talk about bringing water out of the creek and irrigating and There's reusing the water. There. There's not enough water, but if you could, you know, and you it have to talk to the Army Corps, and we're not doing that on LA River at all, you know, capturing water and reusing yeah. it yet, and you gotta pump it to get it back up here. But that's certainly more sustainable than irrigating and using water all the time. What they're trying to do with the water issue is ignore the storm days and let the water go to the ocean dirty. And dry weather runoff. The dry weather they're going to take care of, like the Sepulveda Channel, they're going to actually have some sort of equipment to do that. Now they're trying to get away with running the water down the creek straight to the ocean when it rains. Storm water. Storm water. So I'm saying maybe we can offer an alternative to that and actually bring the water up and clean it up naturally. Once again, as long as there's water coming up, you pump it in, then there's opportunities there. What about having a soft bottom here? Oh, that's, that's, an that, Army Corps. that's an Army Corps of Engineers. Yeah. We'll if you go up, the county actually has plaques that talk some about Bologna Creek yep. and how it operates, that if we could just duplicate and get some of those plaques that Mark has put up there on the hill and put them on the fences down here to educate you know, That's the community, part of the it's a real simple, yeah. you know, yeah. to right. do, just duplicate what's there and, and put it down here.